Hey everybody, Pastor Ken and Charlotte here. And uh, let's go to the Word of God. And um, I've been reading from Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. And uh, I talked about uh, the pimple popper experience. I talked about the plan. I talked about the pattern. And now I want to talk about pursuit. Jesus said to the disciples, follow me. I will make you fishers of man. Their part was to follow close. His part was to make them fishers of men. It happened by the covering of his precious blood and the power of the Holy Spirit that would come upon raw bone fishermen and turn them into powerful preachers. It was an act, a divine act of God. May I remind you, he's still doing those precious miracles today. I'm sure you have heard of the revival that's going on in, in uh, Kentucky uh, this past week. Asbury. Asbury Theological Seminary. I read today where there all, ma all the major colleges in that area uh, clean and, and to other states are busing people, their students, to those places to experience the power of Almighty God. There's no secret how to do that. What's bad that's in it's got to come out, pimple popping. I talked about priorities, that there'd be nothing that takes the place in our hearts of God. It takes a priority over that. I talked about the plan. Uh, you know, the plan is there's an alternative behavior. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving. And I talked about the pattern. Just as God, through Christ, is forgiving you. You know, if my people, which are called by my name, uh, shall repent and turn from their wicked ways and pray, I, I will hear their prayer, and I'll answer, and I'll, and I'll heal their land. I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. The, the principles are the same. If we will humble ourselves before God, God will move in a mighty way. Tempted to say something here. I just wonder if there's anybody that I know that would take the time out to have a revival. You see those kids, there's some of them that have been in Asbury for four days now in the presence of God. I can't imagine that. Oh, there's been lots of other times where that happened the same way. Azusa Street in California, the Holy Ghost came just like on the day of Pentecost. There's been many, many. Brownsville in Florida, there's been many revivals that I've been in where I've seen the Spirit of God. Nothing that I've done, believe me. But to stand back and see God move. And I tell you, there's a few things that always that it always has in common with. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, confess their sins, turn from their wicked ways, there's the key right there, okay? There's the key right there. And if that happens, God moves. And so we move on to the last point today, and that's pursuit. Pursuit. Pursuing a close relationship with God is it's describing a non-going effort to never give up, to never quit, a non-going effort that whatever he leads, I will follow. I had a new twist of that when I was in Mexico and the air was filled with bugs and flying around and they get in your food and somebody said that's a new verse to that song where he leads I'll follow and what he feeds I'll swallow <laughs> I thought that was funny and here's the deal um, pursuing Jesus reading your Bible 
and saying, Lord, I give you authority in my life to lead me, guide me, direct me, cover me with the blood, fill me with the Holy Spirit, saturate me with the word of God as I read it, and may sin be repulsive to me. The Bible says, don't think it strange concerning the fiery darts of the enemy, the, the, the temptations in the trial. It's normal to everybody that's alive. But I, I'd just like to tell you where I'm coming out of that. I realize after you become a Christian, there's a very, very sweet place near to the throne of God. There's no sin there. When you get there, it's the holiness of God. And that's what we need to pursue. You might think me silly, but I've actually asked God, when I'm tempted with sin, and I am the same as any other person, when I'm tempt tempted with sin, help it to actually nauseate me. Would you dare pray that prayer? How about to actually make me sick? Nauseate me. May I get a picture of Jesus on the cross in my mentality, in my head, in my spirit, and think that, and remember that if I commit sin willfully, hmm, You say, but yeah, the grace of God is so good, he'll forgive me. Yeah. Here's something I read the other day. When grace becomes an excuse to sin, you are no longer under grace, but you're under deception. Wow. Yes, God wants to forgive. Yes, he's full of grace. grace. Yes, he's full of mercy. But if you take sin casually, you're just hurting yourself. So remember, be a pimple popper. That sin has to come out. Only the blood of Jesus, only the word of God, only the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have to be the one to put your thumb on it. And I do too. And so it's a growth. And so we pursue it. No one, Charles Stanley, listen to this. No one accidentally becomes mature in the Lord. Spiritual growth requires a diligent pursuit of God. Let me read it again. No one accidentally becomes mature. You just don't fall into it. People talk about falling in love. Yeah, you know, I remember when I saw Charlotte. Load my hat right off. I'm still in love with her. But I, cut, I just got to tell you, in order for that love to remain sweet and workable, and I just told her tonight that being on a vacation with her, just her and I are here, it's very peaceful, very peaceful very peaceful, that she was a person who perpetuated peace. And I meant that. And I think that's the best thing a person could say to their wife at the eve of Valentine's Day here. But uh, in my case, it's really true. She doesn't like squabbling. She doesn't like fighting. She likes peace. Now, if I told you that we just fell into that the same way that we fell in love, no, didn't happen. Lots of struggles, lots of opportunities, lots of challenges, lots of forgiving, lots of not going to bed angry with each other, lots of decisions and choices about, I I'm going to work this no matter if it kills me, and it might. <laughs> but it's sweet to make the right choices and watch how God blesses your life. The same as what you have to pursue 
marriage relationship to make them more. You got to pursue. You got you got to have a date night once in a while. You 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 know you got to pursue it. You got to you just got to embrace it. You got to embrace each other. How long has it been since you had a desire just to pursue God, to embrace God, to call on God and said, I just need to be close to you. Here's what Charles Stanley, great man of God. No one accidentally becomes mature. Spiritual growth requires a diligent pursuit of God. Charles Stanley. May you grow in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to be become growing Christians, overcoming Christians, being enlarged as we grow more like you. Help us to put on the full armor of God. We've already talked about that, Lord. But one thing we know, we want to be more like you. So we ask you to please help us with that. Help us to crucify the flesh. Help us to entertain the Holy Spirit's working. Help us to not quench the Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God, pour yourself out on my life, Pastor Ron's life, the congregation at Mountaintop, and Christianity at large. Let your Holy Spirit fall upon us. Now thank you and praise you. Amen.